All right, gang. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Budget Deck Tech Tuesday here on the ICG Store YouTube page. We have a very interesting one here today. It is mono black, I guess you could say combo. The whole goal of this deck is to play this Peer Into the Abyss while you have Underworld Dreams in play. So what this card says is that a player draws cards equal to half the library and lose half their life. So if they draw half their library, they're going to take a ton of damage from this Underworld Dreams. They also lose half their life, but they're going to they're probably going to die anyways from drawing a bunch of cards. It's a uh, it's a very interesting deck. It's uh, I don't know if I can consider it super consistent because this card costs seven mana, but it's definitely it's definitely fun when it goes off. My my wife Michaelina was playing this deck the other day, and I saw it and I said, you know what, that's kind of interesting. And I looked at the cards in the deck, and they're all and they're all pretty inexpensive. I think uh, after everything said and done, I think it's like the deck was like sixty dollars, maybe like sixty five, and these Grim Tutors are like fifteen dollars a piece. So if you cut those out of the deck, that's like this is a thirty dollar deck. I mean, it might be a meme, but every time you win, it's going to feel great, too. So, uh, a sideboard, I have uh, Lilian in here. I really want to play with this card more, so I just kind of slammed it in there. I, you could you could put any other kind of, like, attrition -y cards. And then a ton of removal, because this deck is probably going to fold to aggressive decks. There might be a little bit too much removal in here. There's, like, there's, what, three, five, eight, there's, like, ten pieces of removal. So, uh, or there's that nine. Um, so, that might be a little bit too much, but... The decks, it's going to be really hard to beat beat uh, aggressive decks. The early game, we have Hand Disruption, or Removal Suite is two Eliminates, four Heartless Axe, and Murderous Riders. The Treacherous Blessing is a three-mana draw three. The Lose Life, it, you know, it's going to make us even worse against aggressive decks, but we'll we'll see where it takes us. And then Fenlurker is just a solid two-drop creature that blocks, and is like kind of a threat in case they're able to deal with the Peer into the Abyss. And then Obnixilis, this is like your 5-6 of the underworld dreams because it has that text on it. It also you could destroy creatures and you know you can even destroy your own creatures and draw cards if that's what you need to do. But so the deck's pretty straightforward is like we have ways to get to the late game, play your underworld dreams, and then play the peer into the abyss and just hopefully that's good enough. So we're gonna go ahead and play a couple of matches with this. We're gonna see if we can meme some people to death. The new uh, a new season did start, so we are no longer mythic unfortunately. But and uh, as of as the time of recording this, the Zendikar Rising news did drop. So I'm gonna try and um, as we play, I'm gonna try and give you little snippets of what I saw, the uh, the big uh, you know the big things that come through like and and try maybe like a little bit of what the retailer side of everything looks like as uh, you don't get to see that as often. So this hand looks pretty all right. Just you know creatures removal stuff to get to the late game in lands, but. The, uh, in their live stream, they started it off as uh, Lotus Cobra reprint, and as as, I, as a card that I will more than likely be playing, it's also the art is phenomenal, and they they, they showcased it too um, by give showing off its showcase border. So they have just like they did with every other set. There's a specialty border frame to it. If you like Google it, it looks really nice. And they keep getting like better and better. I feel like, but I guess the core set one was oh, we're playing a red deck Ugh. so the core set one was just extended arts so it wasn't really too much too fancy but the the comic book art style for ikoria was on point but, so the lotus cobra it's, it looks really cool and they, they gave some other uh there was a hedron crab reprint but it's not hedron crab it's a crab but it, when you play a land it's what it does is it mills three from each opponent, so it'll get around like Ley Line of Sanctity or in Commander, it'll hit everybody, which is kind of neat. So it's not a, a functional reprint, it's a functional reprint, but it's not the same. They have some removal for our Fenlurker. If they, if they want to use their burn spells on the Fenlurker, I'm totally cool with that. Oh, they have Robber the Rich. Fortunately, this doesn't have Death Touch, <clears throat> but. So we'll go ahead and trade here, 100%. Just trying to get to the later later stages of the game. Ooh, Underworld Dreams. So we can get this down, but then they get another Robber trigger. Let's go ahead and Heartless Act the Robber. Heartless Act that, yeah. So, And they, they did spoil a bunch of new cards, too. Uh, a lot of them, they're commons and uncommons. They did some, some, the Planeswalkers were spoiled last week. Another robber. 
that's okay. Uh, but they, uh, the Planeswalkers were last week. They a couple commons and uncommon cards that uh, they probably won't see play, but they'll be limited, limited good cards. Um, they, uh, they also announced the returning mechanics, which were Kicker and Landfall, which, you know, no surprises there. Uh, let's go ahead and hit a card out of their hand. Maybe, maybe like a Torbran or uh, if they're playing the, the enchantment card. Cavalcade. Ooh, perfect. So definitely want to hit this Torbran. That make a good pass. Um... So yeah, they they spoiled the kicker mechanic and the landfall mechanic, which is cool. Both great solid mechanics. I think somebody once said that everything in Magic can be boiled down to like the kicker mechanic. So you compare like um, like overload is just like a kicker cost, but you know more words added on to it. So I thought that was kind of an interesting take on it. But they also announced the party mechanic, which is. Uh, relevant to the creature type of the creature. So when you play, say, D and D, you know the main, the the typical class is. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of a land. The typical class is cleric, rogue, wizard, and warrior. You know, at least to them. Uh, so we want to get this castle down. We'll get the, this down. Three, four, five, six, seven. So the clock is ticking here, but all we need to do is hit land and the pier into the abyss, and we win. So, but you have your 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 crew there, right? The, the clerics, the wizards, the rogues. And every time a creature comes into play that has this, like, the, the party mechanic, I guess it's not a keyword, but it's, like, um, with your, it benefits if there's parties in play. Like, as one creature said, if it comes into play, however many party members you have, you gain two life per card. So if you had all four, you'd gain eight life. So it's really neat. It's, like, the more, uh, usually when it comes to, like, the creature archetypes, it's always been you play the same ones, you get things. You know, the gall. Oh, wow. What a draw. So, two, three, four, five. Well, unfortunately, there's five damage on board, so I don't necessarily know what we can draw here. A ritual of soot. Mm. If only we drew those in opposite order, we'd have won this game. That's unfortunate. But, and then <laughs> watch there be a swamp on top. So, we're going to go ahead and bring in a ton of removal. Uh, cries. Cut some of our top end. And then a Grim Tutor. Yeah, so creature types in the past have always been, they, they reflect off of each other. So if you play, like Slivers is a good example. If you have a Sliver, they all gain this ability. They all gain the Vindicate ability, or they all gain Sacrifices, draw a card. So, but this is kind of neat where you have, if you have four different creature types, you get more benefits. So it's, it's kind of interesting. It's an interesting take on, on the, the, the creature type line. So, uh, they also spoiled uh, modal double-faced cards. So modal DFCs is like their their uh, design keyword. So this hand looks pretty weak, but if we just hit running lands, we'll be all right. I keep it. Whatever. We just need to hit running lands. So they're mobile, modal DFCs. So what that means is there's a mode that you pick when you cast it and either comes into play face face up or face down. And by face up, face down, I mean the front or back of the card. And that's why they're called modal D double face cards. Because you pick when you cast it where it's gonna go, whether it's the front side or the back side. And the, the big thing they spoiled was the lands. Oh, that's not good. The lands are, say that you have Swamp Forest, you can either play it as a Swamp or a Forest, but it stays like that forever. Well, for, as well as, as long as it's in that in the zone of in play. Um, so I think that's the, definitely a really oh, perfect. There's three with Double Cry for their next play. So I think that's a definitely a really unique thing they're doing but we do have Extinction Event. We're just gonna go ahead. Uh, we're gonna fire this off for odds and exiles too, which is great. <clears throat> and then we can do the Castle Lockthwain if we want. But the modal DFCs, it's really neat. They've kind of like done it before with other flip cards, but you have to, oh man, this is gonna be rough. But we gotta hit our land drops.
So this blocks at least. Uh, with the flip cards, but you had there was always like kind of like abilities that had to trigger it to flip somehow. So it's kind of neat. It's a it's a neat difference. <clears throat> and then they spoil the lands. I I don't know if those lands are going to see play. Like I, there was hubbub on the internet of people spoiling this like, like a week ago, and I was like, in order to do we have six mana? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So we can go cry cry, and get them both. <clears throat> um, and I and I and I said to myself, the the only way that those are playable if they have like you know Forest Mount Island in their type line, if you could fetch them out and then decide when they come into play. But I mean, what uh, the Shocklands are rotating out, so I guess technically they'll see play. But uh, five, six, seven. Hmm. This is interesting. So we have the mana to cast it, but I don't think we can do that yet. <clears throat> um, if they had the Swamp Island in the text line, that way you could fetch it out with fetch lands. So yeah, this is a lot of damage. So I, they'll see standard play. They won't see much past that. But they'll be cool, and then they have the, the full art versions, like the collector pack versions, look phenomenal, because they're like full art, and they both sides have art. Oh man, they look really good. Oh no, here we go. Re Heartless Act, okay, that's solid. <clears throat> so, I'm definitely gonna be playing some full art foil versions of these. Uh, wow, so... This is interesting. We can kill the Torbran, or we can kill the Bone Crusher Giant. Torbran is more damage long term. Bone Crusher Giant is more stem the bleeding now. I guess we'll destroy Torbran. This Treacherous Blessing is doing some damage to us. Pass. So they're probably going to pump it with the castle. If they don't play anything, then this, this last card in the hand is probably land. So if we draw off of castle, lock point. Okay, Scorch Bitter. So we have eight lands. I think we almost certainly have to draw this castle. Well, if we draw off the castle, it puts Scorch Pit or Lethal. Yeah, I don't think we can. Murderous Rider. So we can play that as a creature that blocks and gains some life. Hmm. We cannot cast it as a spell because of the Treacherous Blessing, unfortunately. So yeah, let's go ahead and play it as a creature. Puts us at three. Puts us at a virtual two with a Scorch Bitter. We can block the Bone Crusher Giant. So I guess technically we're not dead. Oh, no, we are dead because of Castle Unbreath. Oh, uh, no. I think we'll still be at one. Block. Yeah, so we'll go to four. They'll hit us for two. So we're still at two. We need a Ritual of Soot. Ritual of Soot, please. Ooh. I mean, there's the combo, but we don't have enough lands, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah. Let's draw our next card, see what it would be. Would we have been able to do anything sweet? Uh, nope. <clears throat> Well, that did not work out the way I wanted it to. We're in Platinum. We need to get to Diamond and then Mythic. 
Ooh, booster pack. I think we'll have some, we have some booster packs to open as well. All right, let's run this through another game, see if we can meme them out. I do think that this deck, I mean, it really does just fold to the aggressive deck, so. I mean, you gotta you gotta draw pretty well. I think we, we we drew pretty well that game. We just didn't we didn't we didn't get it on time. This is fine. Removal, draw spells to hit more lands, and then peer into the abyss. Would prefer to go first here, but oh man, I want these sleeves. That is so cool, so cool. This deck is probably pretty weak to uh, counter spells too. You know what? This deck might just be weak all around. I don't know. <laughs> But, yeah, so that was the two new mechanics they spoiled was the party mechanic and the, the double-faced cards. Um, and they also brought back every pack will have a flip card in it. So that was kind of like the Innistrad block they had when they their flip cards. So that means there will be the return of the triple rare pack. You could open a pack and get three rares. Your regular rare, the flip card rare, and a foil rare. So I don't know if that's ever happened to me, but, you know, that'd be sweet if, if it did. So what do we got here? Treacherous Blessing. Uh, we don't want to discard, so we'll just go ahead and pass. I'm fine with just hitting our land drops, and then one day we'll combo. Um, they also uh, revamped the tip card. So uh, not the tip card, but the flip card that you would put in your deck That if you don't want to put the flip card and take them out of the sleeves. It's like uh, now it is... Uh, play nothing, we'll pass. Now it's just a uh, card with a big empty space in it so you can you can check what, what the card is and then in the bo bottom you write some information about it so uh murderous rider this is interesting because if they play like uh uh i guess world silence is three mana so we can go, we can go ahead and murderous rider this i i don't think they're playing Ral. Un unsummon is fine well, maybe it's not fine. I really wanted to cast that Murderous Rider, so... I guess we'll survive. But, yeah, the tip cards will be a little bit different. There'll be a section that you can write in. All right, Agonizing Remorse. Let's see what you're working with. Uh, remorse. <clears throat> hmm. So Gust is a, a miss, Sprint is kind of a miss, Brazen Borrower and Stormwing Entity. Hmm. So Brazen Borrower does more, but the Entity is a five drop. So I guess we'll just take the Entity. And then uh, let's get this Treacherous Blessing down while we got the time. And if they want to flash in a Brazen Borrower, that's fine. Oh, another Treacherous Blessing. We really need our the other side of our combo. We need the Underworld Dreams. So they could sprint it up if they wanted to. Uh, they're playing the Tempo deck, so... Okay. They might just be doing it for the Scry. I would save that for like the Enchantment, the Riddle Form. Uh, just other things that need turned on. So Ritual Soot is going to be the most effective play here. That would because that way we can play Eliminate later on. <clears throat> and I guess technically two peer into the abyss is uh, you just win. So trying to eliminate this Sprite Dragon. They could Ether Gust it to the top of their library if they'd like. That feels kind of bad though. But, I mean they're not getting any other use out of it. Cool. So that means that we are, we're just going to take one next turn. Let's go get the uh, Fen Lurkers, kind of whatever. Hmm. I, we really need the other combo piece. Well, I guess let's get the Fen Lurker down. It can attack. And then, do we Treacherous Blessing? No, we'll wait. We'll wait a turn on that. That way we can go Soot and Blessing. A lot of pass to the end of turn. More lands. Okay, so... 
We'll sit, and then we'll Treacherous Blessing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go ahead and Treacherous Blessing now. Oh, man. So technically, <laughs> we technically we have the win, but we will. Uh, this is not good. That was a pretty bad treacherous blessing. Yeah, I guess we'll just pass. Try and hit that underworld dreams. Oh, that's a good draw opponent. So this puts us at four. I actually don't think that we can win from here. Uh, oh my goodness, because we need four life. Oh man. I, <laughs> so uh, I'm not 100% sure if there's anything in our deck that gains us life. Uh, oh yeah, Murderous Rider. But then, oh no. So they drew a threat, so it looks like... I don't, uh, it looks like we're not going to be able to win this game. We could draw a removal for this and then have them blank a couple turns in a row. So I guess technically it's... Whoa! Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Okay. So Disfigure is kind of an interesting choice here. Just because their creatures will get bigger than that. Um... I'm going to bring in two. We'll see if there's anything else we need to cut out of the deck. Cut a Grim Tutor. The Fen Lurker's not going to do a ton. But it does get... It gets rid of just gas out of their hand. So, let's just bring in one Disfigure. And this looks okay. <laughs> I guess. I guess it looks okay. So, um, back to the announcements today. A lot of stuff came out. Uh, another thing was they announced all these sets that are releasing next year. So the winter set that will come out in January, February is uh, called Heim. A lot of people have been asking for this set for a long time. This is like the Vikings-themed set. So I'm really interested in what they do with it. I'm really interested to see what they do with this. Um, they said that they've, you know, talked about it in the past. They've, like, alluded to it. So I, I don't know those illusions, but we'll, we'll see. I'm excited for that. Uh, next up, the spring set is going to be Strixhaven. So this is going to be, this is a school where there's mages and they're, they're you know, it's like, uh, think of Hogwarts, I guess. <clears throat> um, but they did say that there is five schools. So that means it's going to have kind of like that, that uh, Kanza Tarkir feel, the, uh, the Guild of Ravnica feel, where there's groups, you know, there's groups of people and there's going to be maybe three color decks or there's going to be two color, two color themes or whatever. Interested to see how they what they do with that. Um, I, I love the the group thinking, so I, uh, I really, that's why I love Ravnica and I loved Cons. I don't I don't think they've really done it with a lot of other sets, but yeah, it's been a long time. And then what else did we have? So they're uh, instead of instead of a core set, they're going to be doing a D and D crossover. So what that is, is the Forgotten Realms is going to have, you know, people from their storyline to um, the magic storyline. So I'm not necessarily sure exactly what, what characters are going to bring over or what mechanics, but if I had to guess, there's going to be lots of D20 rolling. They're going to roll lots of D20s, and then things happen because you rolled the D20. Um, and then I don't know after that, because the party mechanic is in Zendikar Rising. So I would I would full heartedly expect to see that mechanic return then and then some other new ones, but definitely a lot of dice rolling. But <clears throat> and then the final one for the end of the year, the 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 Christmas set, the end of the year set, the one the biggest set of them all, they are doing another return to Innistrad. So that's kind of uh, their the the storyline was not fully completed the last turn around because of 
uh, the Emrakul was imprisoned on the moon, so technically she's still alive, so I guess maybe we'll go back to that. It's Oh, it's also important to note that with the Zendikar, uh, our opponent seems to not want to be here, but um, it's important to note that with the Zendikar storyline, uh, they are bringing back web uh, web stories. So, you know, people who like to read this stuff online, that's the perfect spot for you, or a perfect time to read some more information from you, get some more information to you. So definitely super inter interesting there, but they said there's going to be they were breaking it out into two sets. So it's going to be Innistrad uh, vampires and Innistrad werewolves. So um, I, I didn't I didn't necessarily understand exactly what they meant if it's going to be like the winter set and then the the other winter set or they're going to have two sets at once. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what they're going to be doing. So oh look at that, we win! Congratulations, deck. All right, up the chain we go. So that's the next year, and that's not all they spoiled. Let me get into another game for sets that they're doing. So those are just like the standard sets. They're also coming out with other supplemental sets, kind of like Commander Legends. That's uh, at the beginning of the year, they said this year was the year for commanders, for the commander players, and I mean, it really was. There's Commander Legends, there was uh, the Commander decks were very good. They put Commander decks that come with every set now. Uh, the Commander Collection Greens coming out at the end of the year. Just a ton of great Commander product. But what f uh, what feels like next year is is like the year for Modern or the year for like Eternal formats. <clears throat> Since like Modern's kind of like their baby, that's what they focus on the most. This hand is a little weak, but if we can rip land, 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 we can do some damage. Fen we're definitely we have some attrition going on, so we can trade cards for their cards. But next year, in addition to those standard sets, they are also doing, at the beginning of the year, Tempest Remastered. So it's going to be a, uh, a remake of the Tempest block. So if you, they said they believe that. I didn't draft, but the drafting back then was phenomenal. So they wanted to kind of redo that. But they're also doing, they're gonna, there's cards that are going to be in there that have our new cards. So like say Path to Exile with an old card border. I think they also showed like Chalice of the Void. So think of like the old cards with like the brown border. That's um, those will be in there. So let's go ahead and we're gonna try and destroy this creature while we can. So let's go to Murderous Rider. We can hit him for one. <clears throat> so that's kind of like the sweet thing about Tempest Remastered. So there'll be you know more reprints, which is always good. And then the big one for next year. So Tempest Remastered will be between quarter one and two. So the beginning of the year at some point. Oh man, Hexproof from black and it's three. So we can just go ahead. We can ritual a soot this away. Yeah, we'll poke him for one. And then we'll ritual a soot this away. So yeah, that is in the first between quarter one and two. So that's gonna be the beginning of the year, kind of like uh, what was what was the beginning of this year? Everything got super messed up, but there was the so double masters was the fall one. So double masters is gonna be like the second set of the year. Um, but I guess jumpstart. I guess technically jumpstart is the one that was supposed to come out earlier, um, but with COVID, it like really messed everything up. But so the second one that comes out, right, like when Double Masters came out, is Horizons, Modern Horizons 2. So it's going to be all new cards or reprints. Let me let's see, we have... Hmm. Let's go ahead and cast this to try and hit land into Fenlurker or Remorse. Yeah, let's do that. So let's hit land. Come on, land. Wow, that was... a pretty bad draw oh man pretty bad <clears throat> but the modern horizons 2 which will be come out between i think it's at quarter three and four. Oh, that's a solid draw by the opponent um we need a wrath we can grim tutor for a wrath but i mean we're taking a ton of damage here this is seven puts us at 11 and we'll take nine we'll put us at two so we can go fenlurker fenlurker to block or Fenlurker Eliminate, I suppose, is better. Uh, 
Uh, we'll leave up. We'll leave up. Eliminate in case they want to do something. Would they exile? Forest. <clears throat> Forest and serpent. Oh no, questing beast. Yeah, that's just the nail in the coffin. All right, let's go to game two. So the second, the second set was uh, Modern Horizons. Um, take some eliminates. We'll cut top end. We'll get rid of a Grim Tutor. Uh, what else is pretty weak here? I guess the hand disruption, kind of like the weakest. And they said that enemy fetches will be in Modern Horizons too. So I guess, I guess technically they're altering how they're doing Horizons because the last time Modern Horizons was only new cards and only reprints, or sorry, only. It's only new cards or reprints that were not originally in Modern. So um, I guess they're kind of uh, deterring away from that. There will be reprints in that set. So very, I don't know. We'll probably get more clarification next year at some point. But I really enjoyed the Modern Horizons draft format. So hopefully they can keep that, keep that on par. Uh, adding new cards to Modern without affecting Standard was... That's such a great idea is that if they're able to put powerful cards but not you know mess with standard it's just it's, it's awesome so this hand's pretty sweet i would love to keep it if it was a seven but i think we're going to ship this uh peer into abyss and try and draw one later there's three more in the deck <clears throat> so yeah that's the sets releasing next year it's a ton of heat Oh, look at that. It was, it was right on top of the library. So let's go ahead and eliminate the Pelt Collector. Next turn, we can get this Underworld Dreams down. Hmm. We might have to Heartless Act this. Yeah, because it's going to start getting counters on it, which is no bueno. And then, then it's going to be very hard for us to destroy. But we have this Castle Lock thing to, tr key to try and draw us a bunch of lands. Wrath. Ooh, Fenlurker. <clears throat> so we'll play this Fenlurker to block. We'll get to grab a nab a card out of their hand. Um, <clears throat> what else? What else did they say? The uh, they sh uh, spoiled some secret layers that are coming out. I think one will be coming out tomorrow. Uh, nine three. Oh, cause Yargle. Yargle's a nine three creature, so they want they're coming out on August third. Um, so I'm called Serpent. <clears throat> so that's kind of interesting. Block. Oh, there's land. If we can hit land, land, and they hit nothing, nothing. I guess. <laughs> Well, even even with that, this they'll that's 16 damage, so we will lose. <clears throat> um. Oh no, another harbing harp, dude! Not again, the harbinger. Harbinger down. We need a we need a uh, extinction event. I know that, but I won't even do it. Unfortunate. Oh man, this deck is not doing too well. <laughs> <clears throat> we are memeing it up. So I guess technically we, we, we won one because of our opponent. So we're one and two. We'll play one more since that opponent did concede to us. So One more game we'll put in the books and then we'll talk about how uh, good, bad, or ugly this deck was. Good, bad, or ugly. And I'll tell you what, it's no... Uh, <clears throat> it's no Katy Perry. But they did, though, the secret layers. The... Uh, they spoiled the Argyle one, and they also are doing a Walking Dead one. So they're going to be cards that, you know, if there's going to be Shane and Rick Grimes, Sand looks good, uh, and they'll be related to Magic cards. Kind of like how they did with the the Godzilla cards, where it'll say, you know, Rick Grimes, but underneath of it it'll be like, uh, you know, Flying Man. All right, this is like a what, sacrifice deck. Hmm. I guess Rankle is the scariest card. Yeah, it looks like Rankle's the scariest. 
But I guess we could have taken the Midnight Rider as well. This will make us not discard. Perfect. Ding, ding, ding. We got that Underworld Dreams. Combo piece one. So if I had to guess, there's a Midnight Reaper coming down. And then we can Extinction Event it so they don't draw a card. So that is odds. So the new secret layers they're going to have more uh, theme towards the real life things I would have to guess or at least at least that secret layer will be like that. Um, I'm trying to think of what other cards they spoiled. They spoiled like a, a white uh, Woe Strider. They spoiled like a white core that when it comes into play everybody draws a card. Oh, awesome. So there's the combo. But can we get up to the mana for it. We need to hit our land drops. Well, if we play a longer game, I think that's okay. So we'll save this Ritual of Soot and we'll just... Hmm. Do we want to get this Underworld Dreams down? I don't think so. Because we can play... If we rip land next turn, we can go Underworld Dreams, Heartless Act. Attack. I think we're just going to Heartless Act this guy. This definitely doesn't feel like a very good play because they're just going to cast their village rights, but... That's okay. We just need to soak up some damage because these Treacherous Blessings are going to add up fast. <clears throat> Oh, dude, they just had another Woe Strider. Um, I guess we'll fire off this Heartless Axe now. That way we kind of get free range to do what we want on our next turn. Because they'll, they're just going to have two goats in play. Uh, oh, another... The, so they've spoiled the Jace and the Nahiri, which I, I think are going to be solid cards. Uh, well, I think the Jace is going to be a very good card. Especially with... Uh, it looks like some of the other cards there, it's like a blue-white aggro deck is like feels like it's starting to come to fruition. Oh, man. Do we just play Treacherous Blessing and try and race them? Dude, we're doing it. Try and get to our combo. Land, land, land. That's fine. I'll take that. So we're going to Heartless Act on their turn. We're going to go Underworld Dreams, Heartless Act. Bolus is Citadel. Oh, dude. Dude. Okay, so the top of their library is a land, it looks like. So let's play the Underworld Dreams. Take our two. And then we can leave Heartless Act up. And if we rip land, we'll win. Come on, deck. We just need land. Land so we can win the game one time. Bolus's Citadel. Oh, man. You don't want it. And we cannot activate the castle yet, so... That's fine. Yeah, I think there's going to be, like a so far, like a solid blue-white aggressive deck. They hit, is there another land on top of their library? Ooh, Mayhem Devils. Okay. So, uh, that's fine as well. So, Ritual of Soot actually cleans up this whole board, so we're not going to cast this Heartless Act. But, if we can rip land, land! Yes! Look at this. Live in the dream. Yes, I do. This is going to be sweet. Draw them up. Draw them up, buddy. 
How many are they drawn? They're going to be drawn 20 cards. Whoa, look at that. Look at all that. Look at all these triggers. Oh, wow. This is so cool. Look at this. Take the damage. Ding, 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 ding. That's sick. You know what? This was totally worth it. This deck is totally worth it. All right, so Cry of the Carnarium is good because it exiles, but honestly, it doesn't hit that much stuff, which sucks. So, but we definitely want these Eliminates. Um, because Woe Strider is a X3. All right, that'd be sweet if it could, you could search the card. Um, what else? Priest of Forgotten Gods in O2. Okay, we'll bring it in. Uh, we'll cut these Obnixiluses, and then we'll shave. Oh, Organizer Morse is going to be good, so I think we're just going to cut these Grim Tutors. Look at that. We're just gonna we're cutting the most expensive card out of the deck. It's got to mean something. It's got to mean something. So then, uh, yeah, because there was a the party mechanic. Hand looks solid. Well, there was a blue white card that lets you draw cards in game life, and I just it just gave me the vibe of them playing putting a bunch of like a, a blue white aggressive deck in the format. But they also spoiled a green black Nissa. I uh, I didn't get a chance to read it because it was pretty quick, and I didn't look it up afterwards because I started making the video. Uh, perfect priest. We can eliminate that. Um. But the, the neat part of it was that it was green-black. So that means that this Nissa is going dark or something's happening where she's at. Eh, Mayhem Devil Solid. There it is. There's the combo. Um, so something's happening there where she's, like, you know, going to the Liliana side. I remember Chandra and Liliana were, like, were buddies, but this is the Blood Artist effect. Yeah, it drains them. Oh man, so this isn't gonna feel good, but I think we gotta draw. We gotta draw some cards. We need lands. Trip, triple land, please. All right, double land. I'll take that. Triple land. Three, four, five. So next turn we can go Heartless Act, Underworld Dreams, or Agonizing Remorse, Underworld Dreams. I think I like that better. Well, hmm. No, let's go ahead. We're gonna we'll eliminate. Yeah, we're gonna eliminate. Woe Strider. So we're just going to destroy this now, and then next turn we can go agonizing or more heartless act. Okay, ping us for one. Take that. Ooh, Fen Lurker. So I think we can do a bunch of stuff here. We're going to take some damage from this Treacherous Blessing, but... Rankle. So Rankle's... Oh, this double Rankle. Oh, uh, no. Well, I guess we'll just take Rankle. And then we can resolve Fen Lurker. And then we can also Heartless Act the Rankle if he plays it. And this Fenlurker can block their Woe Strider. So, uh, you know, hindsight's 30-50, but if we would have played Fenlurker first, I would probably have guessed they got rid of a Rankle since it's legendary. And then we could have took the other one from the Agonizing Remorse, so. So technically, we, you know, with perfect information, that's a misplay, but it's okay. We're trying to meme them out. We're not trying to play good magic. So if we rip land off the top, we win. Mayhem Devil. Oh, man. So. I think we're just going to soak up some damage and destroy this Woe Strider. Because otherwise they can't sacrifice at, at will. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll block. We'll soak some damage up. All right, land. Swamp, one time. Swamp. Oh, no. All right, so we'll eliminate Mayhem Devil. 
We're at seven. Ooh, Rankle. Rankle's gonna do some damage if they if they rip black. If they rip swamp. Oh man, they drew swamp. So Rankle's gonna hit us for for that. He's a three three right. He's a three three. Oh man, this is gonna be tight. What are we gonna do? We're we gonna draw a card. We're we gonna lose life. What's the play opponent? Each player discards a card. That's fine. So discard Underworld Dreams. <clears throat> oh no. So, uh, uh, so the extinction event means we're not dead. This is evens. Because it exiles. Oh man, this is going to be tight because they need five mana for the Woe Strider replay. Oh no, they had it! So then they can sacrifice both creatures and kill us. Oh man, that's unfortunate. Let's see if they see the line. They do see it. That is unfortunate. And we can't see what our next card is either. Wow. All right. Interesting. Oh, they're... Whatever, we'll cast this and see what they do. I mean, obviously they should do it in response, but... Oh no, it says sacrifice another creature. Well, the, the treacherous blessing is going to kill us. So. Either way, we were dead. Okay, so... Uh, we'll just submit. Let's see if we get a little bit luckier. Well, we, need, we just needed that land and we would have taken it. We'd have taken that game. Oh, man. So, yeah, the Zendikar set, it's really shaping up the set boosters. Uh, they kind of went into more detail of... Uh, this is solid. On exactly what's inside. Or they, I think they just, like, re, uh, re-upped on what, what they are. How they have cards from older sets. They have, you know, just... Instead of having a bunch of cards, they're, like, more fine-tuned cards. So if you're, just, if you're looking to... Uh, just open a random pack off the like off the off the shelf. Then set boosters are what you want. But if you need, if you want to play with the cards in the pack, or if you just want a plethora of standard cards, then draft packs are where it's at. And there are box toppers for set and draft boosters, so you'll be able to get the, the full art fetches, which is going to be amazing. They spoiled all the arts on them. So it looks like they probably take murderous rider here. Fortunately for us, I mean. This hand is kind of like whatever. The more lands, the better. So if I play this swamp, so this one's still okay. It's still a question mark, which is cool. We'll activate, make it a two-two. We'll beat him down with the fen larker. Beat him down. <clears throat> so I'm super excited. I, I'm so ready to play some new decks. Like I feel like, like this. Playing this standard is fun and it's interesting and I enjoy it, but it's it's not really like super relevant because we're right around the corner from rotation. You know, there's no super major events, especially in paper too. Um, so it just it feels like a lull. Like I really wish that Wow Shadowlands had come out, you know, um, like this month, so I had something to do before Zendikar. But they fortunately they both come out around the same time and makes makes my life complicated because I want to play all these games. So we'll threaten with the Fen Lurkers. See if they decide to block. And then we'll pump the one they don't block. Oh, sick. So we can snag their Woe Strider here. Which is good news for us, because we're just trying to stay alive till we hit our combo. And then we have Heartless Act to leave up. They could sack their own Woe Strider to scry if they'd like. And then we get to keep our Fen Lurker. It doesn't seem very good, but I guess technically it is an option. Ooh, Castle Lockthwain, the Star Destroyer, or the, yeah, the Star Destroyer. Oh, another Woe Strider. Ugh. I guess that's why they blocked. 
Another swamp. Well, we got the mana. Attack with the Fen Lurker. They're going to chump and sack with their token. Hmm. We'll auto pass until they play something relevant, like a Mayhem Devil or something. You know, this deck's probably pretty cheap now that I think about it. Like, Priest is like a dollar rare, Ghost Strider is a dollar rare, and Blood Crypts, I guess, are $10 or something. So, four of those bad boys put you right at $40. But, we could, we could play Tap Lands in place of those. Take our beats. If we could rip Underworld Dreams into Pure into the Abyss, that would be nice. That would be the dream. Whisper Squad. You got it, buddy. You got it. They, oh no. Man, that's too many lands in a row. So we'll activate this once. They might they might end up double blocking here. I don't know. Oh no, it comes in tapped, so. And they sack it to the Woe Strider, the song and dance. Feels like it takes forever. It's taken days. But yeah. I think uh the the lands. The lands in the new set are going to be... I really wish they had the type line of Forest Mountain Island or whatever. It'd make them just a little bit better, a little bit more playable, but... Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's going to be really sweet. Yes, auto pass, please. Yes, I want to auto pass. You do not need to ask me. And then all of the sets next year, and they got we got a fistful of spoilers today... It's a good day for magic. It's a good day for magic players. I mean, we could Heartless Act as Woe Strider, but I... We're just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> they just have pile... Oh, I guess they're, they're reanimating that one. Yeah. So that kind of sucks. Castle Lockthwain. So let's go ahead and I guess destroy it now. Village rights, and they're gonna draw two. So let's go ahead and try and we'll draw a card, lose two life. See if we can hit something. Ooh, eliminate, perfect. So we will eliminate the Woe Strider. This way it kind of like nullifies their scries. So like if they hit something good on top, they have to leave it there and then they get to draw it, but makes their scrying a little bit worse. Yeah, so let's see. Otherwise, they could, like, stack their decks on multiple turns. No attacks. This guy will block. Well, I, I guess, actually, I should have attacked because I'm not going to block this turn. And if we can get up to 10 mana, that means we can win in one turn. So 8, 9. Ooh, Mayhem Devil. Solid draw. Priest. Oh, we need a Wrath. We need a Wrath of Goss. Virtual Assault. So land, draw a card, lose two. Wrath of God, Wrath. Oh, there's one combo. I do not think that's gonna do it though because Priest is gonna make us sack. We'll take six, five, four, three, two, and we're dead. Unfortunate. So this deck, uh, this deck did not feel very good. <laughs> this might be one of those you wanna play with uh, your buddies, bring it out every once in a while. I mean, and maybe who knows, maybe in the Zendikar set will get cards that are going to power it up. Let's uh, let's crack let's crack a couple packs. I don't know. We have an Almond Cat and six Core 2021. So we need to get our uh, our rare Mythic cards up so we can build every single deck when Zendikar Rising releases. There we go. Rare double rare wild card. Ding ding ding. Uh, all right, Tamer Priest. Whatever. Get up. Get up on out of here. Get on out of here. 
Okay, pass. Moving on. So we got Alpine Houndmaster. Ooh, there's a Harbinger. I said it right that time. <laughs> Is everybody proud of me now? There's another Houndmaster. Oh, a mythic wild card. Almond Cat Remastered. I actually, I don't really know what's in this set. Look at this, it's all new. Rare wild card. Whoa, look at that art. That's the uh, uh, the masterpiece art for the invocations when Almond Cat first released. That's cool. All right, so let's take a quick peek at the deck. Uh, the neat thing about the deck is it does not rotate. So the main component is Peer into the Abyss and Underworld Dreams. So that is good to go for another year. So if they start printing good mono black cards, maybe if you want to delve into a second color. So if we you know upgrade this deck, we could add red and maybe be more of an aggressive deck. I don't or blue, add some counter spells. I'm not 100 percent sure. Like I think I think the deck's concept is pretty good. It's just removal player combo. So, but yeah, that's the deck. Um, I when we won that one time with it, it felt great. So like taking this to an FNM one 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 time over the next year. Probably going to make you feel good. You won't win much, but you'll feel good that one time at the spells resolve. But that's it for me today. Uh, thanks again for hanging out, watching, listening to me talk about the new Zendikar set. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and subscribe. That way you're always seeing when our video goes, videos go live. You'll get to see all the new sweet content. I did, uh, I did order a camera, and so that'll be here soon, and you'll get to see my smiling, ugly mug, so... That will be probably the end of this week, next week, however, whenever I get it set up. So thank you for watching and hanging out. Enjoy your week. Enjoy them Zendikar spoilers.